Welcome everybody to South Kitsap High School. Tonight the powerhouse wolves of South Kitsap take on Gig Harbor. I'm Ben Blankenship, a junior here at South, and helping me call the action from the booth is SK swimming instructor Joey Dane. Good evening, Ben. Thanks for having me tonight. No problem. Uh, I guess right now we're having the seniority uh, recognition because tonight is our last home match at South for the season. We're going to take on Gig Harbor tonight, and then we're going to throw it down to the floor and give these guys a recognition. coming back. So what do you think you're going to see tonight, Mr. Dame? I'm not really for sure. You know, I think South's a pretty dominant team, but um, really I'm not a, an enthusiast of wrestling. Limited knowledge. Uh, I think you'd know, probably know a little bit more than I do. I mean, are these two teams evenly matched, or are we going to see a blowout? Actually, tonight it's going to be definitely loud for one, because we have the band here tonight something that SK has not had recently. We also have uh, the last the home match advantage and uh, that definitely gives like a moral boost to the SK team but we're going to be seeing a killing here as SK is going to take on Gig Harbor. I'm looking at tonight's program. It looks like South uh, has quite a wrestling tradition. Uh, quite a few uh, state places, some first place guys, second place has done some really well during uh, as a team. Is it this year's team kind of competitive also or are they uh, what do you think? Actually every year South comes out and uh, puts forth a good effort. Last year they took Narrows League champions um, a the year before that Narrows League champions but uh, with the new league this year we're going to have to like, definitely, they've been putting in a lot of extra effort with new teams so there, it's always a strong program led by Mr. Huderberg. He's been here for years and just put it out a great wrestlers every year quality quality kids quality coaching uh, take you a long ways definitely actually tonight SK is defending their 93rd 93rd dual meet streak where uh, haven't been defeated in individual teams so definitely a strong tradition of strong wrestlers coming out of SK that's that's quite impressive you know, in, in football, there's always a big rival between South and Gig Harbor. You know, two competitive teams evenly matched. Are we going to see that tonight? Actually, Gig Harbor's wrestlers, um, I guess none of their football players wrestle. So, actually, they have a smaller team coming back this year. So, we may be expecting a slaughter, but who knows? They may have a few no-namers who sort of surprise us. But now, what would you think is the strength of South's team, team tonight? The strength of South's team? Oh, definitely you're going to see Derek Kipperberg and Mike, his younger brother, Micah Kipperberg, and the younger, the, the smaller weights come out and definitely catapult SK into a lead. And Huderberg's on camera right now, definitely instilling a lot into these wrestlers, especially the middleweights with Kyle Cowden, Evan Winslow, who you saw being recognized earlier, team captains. They'll definitely score some points. And uh, John Potts, who's also a sophomore here, he'll be definitely scoring some points for South. So what do you think is uh, the strength of Coach Uderberg? Is he uh, easy to get along with? He's a technician? Or you know, is he one of those guys who just likes to get in there and bang heads and see what happens? Well, 
definitely a scrapper. He was a, uh, I think he was uh, Oklahoma State champion in his high school back in maybe the Stone Age. But he's definitely a, an inspirational guy who wants you to go out there and wrestle for for yourself more than anyone instead of the school or maybe your parents. But definitely puts forth a good effort, and he's a perfectionist. So, like after a match or if you make a mistake, he's there to help you out and definitely get you in some good shape and master the good technique. So I'm sure he's going to like that stone age type of thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, his practice should be a lot of fun. He'll for you get there, me for that. If he ever watches this, but we're going to,
Well, Ben, explain this to me. We're going to start with the 103s and just work our way all the way through to 275. Actually, they have a new rule this year. They just plugged or started plugging into matches where they have the referee before the weigh-ins. They they have just like letting pieces of paper and a hat. I guess they pull out a weight and they'll start there. That way, that more people stay for their matches. That way, they have uh, nobody's leaving before the heavyweights even wrestle. So we're not going to start with 103, we can start anywhere, 145, 152? Anywhere at all, and then they'll work heavier weights up, and they'll come back to the little guys. So we could we could end up leaving with uh, the 103 pounders wrestling last tonight. Well, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. And it's a little more exciting for the wrestlers when they, they expect to have a match like at the end of the night. Or it takes a little bit of the pressure off the heavier guys when they have to come through for their team. But definitely mixes it up a little bit, makes it a bit more fun. Pretty neat. I, I noticed we've got a kind of a young team. And looking through the little roster tonight, we've got some sophomores and a couple juniors. Uh, look good for the future for South Kitsap. Definitely. Next year should be incredible for, for the team with all that experience, guys. Um, a few of the highlights are Pat Kelly, apparently wrestling first tonight. He was a, a freshman last year who went to regionals, which is some achievement. And He's probably state-bound this year. I don't know. You can expect great things out of this guy. Yeah, good, great kid. Had him on the football team, played free safety for us, and wide receiver. Really a competitor. Yeah, he's been wrestling since he was in diapers. He wrestled at Marcus Whitman, was a team captain. Mm -hmm. um, won his Kitsap, uh, or the, what would you call the junior high state championships and whatnot. Just a great wrestler. Pretty interesting. You know, I talked to his little brother. I had him on a baseball team a long time ago. His little brother says he's a better athlete than Pat is. Really? Yes. Yeah, his little brother is also a good wrestler, but I don't know. You can see it right now that Pat's uh, pretty aggressive out there. He's only been out there for maybe 30 seconds. It looks like he's about to score his takedown. So this is a single leg, right, because he's got one leg grabbed up there? Yeah, he's got one leg up there, and he's going to try and pinch it off in his legs and take this guy down by grabbing his other one, but... Pat's giving it some effort. There he goes. There's two takedowns for Pat. So is wrestling just a, a pure muscle type of deal, or is there quite a bit of technique involved in this? Actually, if you wanted to see technique, you'd probably watch Pat right here. He's not the strongest guy on the team. He only weighed 135 pounds, I think, last year. But to come back with 10 pounds of extra muscle and growth spurts and whatnot, and uh, it's more of a technique. Like right now, Pat's just trying to keep this guy in. What otherwise people might see uh, him just rolling him around. But definitely technique. You spend hours in there practicing instead of lifting weights. So I, I take it that once you get out of the big white circle, yeah, you're done. You have to go back to the middle and uh, definitely. It's almost when you're uh, if you're afraid of a guy, you might want to run to the edge of the mat, or if you're about to be pinned, run to the edge of the mat. Uh, you get told in practice, you always got to know where you're at. Okay, now I don't know a whole lot, but did, did he just intentionally let him up? Uh, there was a freestyle start, actually. So instead of having this guy score his one escape or possibly a reversal on Pat, he let him up and uh, with the triangle symbol and uh, just took him out again, probably because Pat's better better on his feet than this guy here in so, Big Harbor. So he's willing to trade two points for one, right? Exactly. Yeah, got exactly. It, got it. Looks like Pat has his wrist right underneath there. He's going to try and work a half on him. Make sure he stays in bounds. And we have the end of the first round. Yeah, Pat's doing a nice job. Four to one. Gave up that one point on just saying, hey, 
go up, stand up, let me take you down again. Yeah. And taking the decision into the second, he chooses up, and he's just better on his feet. So you can see now you can almost count down on your fingers, and then there it is. Goes in on this guy. Now that's a double leg, right? Got double both leg, legs yeah. Up. Is it, there's no rules about how high you pick them off the ground or any of that kind of stuff? I mean, No no rules about how high, just how hard you bring them back down. There's the problem. That's the problem. So once you get them up, you got to bring them under control and yeah, bring them down. Yeah, very gently. <laughs> gently. Oh, I like that. So, again, he chooses to let him up. Yeah, three-style position. He's going to let him go, get his one point, and probably take him down right as he gets up. Mm -hmm. The fact keeps this up instead of uh, maybe pinning this guy, which we'd like to see, get the team six points right off. He can technical fall, which is a lead by 16 points. You know, Pat's only up by four now, but he can definitely do it if he's, uh, if he's patient enough and score the team five just as much. There you go, scoring is two. Score now is 10 to three, or 10 to four, excuse me. So now this becomes more like just a take down, let him up, take down, take let him down up. Take down tournament, huh? I guess. Oh, know, wow. Playing with the guy out there. Uh, it, you know, it'd be kind of embarrassing if I was a guy from <laughs> Gay Car, but I think I'd want to, okay, y'all start shooting at your legs now. Let's definitely, start. definitely. And the only problem with letting a guy up like that is, it, like you said, it can be embarrassing, so they'll start coming after you. And mm -hmm. when you think you have a lead, all of a sudden – Someone's getting very aggressive. He just shucks his Gig Harbor guy right there for two points. Takes him back to the center. So a takedown is any time you get him down onto the mat or you get behind them. Basically, it's control of the, of the hips. If you can control the guy's hips, yes, then you score two points at a takedown. Anytime that uh, contact's broken or whatnot in between two wrestlers, then uh, the other guy scores an escape. Pat Submarine's right there. I guess he couldn't lift him this time, or maybe he got bored with it. So. Score now is 20 to 8, up by 12 points. Only needs uh, two more. Good time running low. Pat's. Yeah. Pat takes a lead of 22 to 8. Definitely looking to tech this guy. So if he technicals, that's worth five points? Five points instead of six. So the, the advantage is, you know, no pin, but you're still getting maximum points out of this. Yeah. And just as embarrassing for Gig Harbor. Yep. Is there a no moss rule? Can this young guy from Gig Harbor just say, I'm done? No. Or does he have to finish the match? Oh, he has to finish. He Unless to he's uh, lost like two quarts of blood or maybe he's broken something. He'll be out there the whole time. Pat now, he's moving, working his movies famous for in practice. Just his half. It's so strong when you get in there. Half Nelson looks like he's about to pin it's, there's almost no escape from it. It's, you live or die by it. Post in the arm. Crowd's starting to get into it, cheering him on. The cheerleaders are pumping the fist. Definitely. And we have a pin, six points. So it looks like South's off to a great start. Definitely. Especially with a pin in the second round. You mostly see those in the third when guys get tired, but not bad, I guess. Right on. So now we go to 152 with Kyle Calden and Drew Lockman. What can we expect here? Is Kyle, ha is Kyle Calden having a good season? Kyle Calden is having a great season, actually. He came off of varsity last year at 152. Um, maybe having a little bit of trouble making weight with growth spurts and whatnot, but definitely an animal. He's always like the, the party at practice, if you would have a party at practice. Mm -hmm. But he's, a, he's an animal. As you can see, two-point wow. takedown with an ankle pick. He's trying to bow and arrow his guy here, stick his head in his short ribs, and there we go, two points. Ah, somebody's bleeding. Looks like Kyle. So uh, with, I guess, the WIA rule, as soon as there's any kind of blood or body fluids, they have to stop the whole deal. And exactly. Um, a lot of bad stuff can happen with blood, but we have the SK Athletic Medicine out there to clean it up. They always have a fun time doing that. Yeah, those kids put in tremendous amounts of hours. Pat Olson and Frida Kohlberg do a great job preparing these kids, and they're really dedicated. They're just like a, Definitely. a, a true athlete out there. Definitely. They spend hours here before we even get here. Tournament times, uh, you have to be at the school maybe 5.45 in the morning. They're here at 4.00. Wow. Just preparing to go. And they're definitely a big part of the team. Without them, uh, 
It'd be pretty messy. I bet. Yeah. They work just as hard, but they don't get sweaty. <laughs> exactly. We have Kyle coming back. It looks like he'll be taking the top position. He's also going to cut his guy loose with the uh, freestyle open. So he's going to try to trade two points for one again, right? Yeah, instead of out-muscling, he's just going to out-wrestle him. Just like that. Two-point takedown. Wow. He makes it look so easy. Too. Qu quick. Really quick. The way he swung his hips around there, got right in behind him. The secret to taking a guy down is getting his hands and his arms out of the way. If you open it up, and that's what Kyle seems to be doing here. This guy's, he's, he pummels him, but not quite good enough for Kyle. Big Harbor working the, uh, the front headlock, trying to shock. Now they have their single leg. I don't know what you call it, but that would look like a pretty, great, um, pretty good defensive move. The guy had... Kyle by the leg, and all of a sudden now he's on his belly and Kyle's on his back. Actually, that would be called the cross face. The cross face is like the number one defense for a wrestler. There's no nose that can stop a cross face. Yeah. So definitely he comes out and muscles his guy and then techs him or techniques him when he's got on one the other, when he's on the attack. Mm -hmm. Another stoppage for Blood. Uh, right now, we've got 42 seconds left in the first. Um, Kyle's doing a pretty nice job. He's got a 62 lead. Um, looks like he's under control. Yeah. Just got to stop that Blood so he can get out there and uh, wrestle. They don't have any kind of disqualifications for too many stoppages or any of that kind of stuff? He, I do believe that the rule is you have five minutes total, but that doesn't include cleanup time. It's just stopping the Blood and whatnot. You have five minutes. And... Uh, Due to Mr. Olson, he says that he's never had someone be DQ'd for uh, for blood time. They have a nice cotton swab to stick up there, and you'll stop bleeding, guaranteed. <laughs> At least you, you won't tell anybody you're yeah, still bleeding, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It looks like they're cleaning him up now. This is a nice chance for a rest for Kyle and get some coaching in, actually. Yeah, I know. I noticed that the gig Carver um, athlete went directly over to his coach, got a couple words of encouragement. Uh, Kyle's over there getting tended to. Yeah. So if you're a gig Carver coach right now, what do you tell your young man? Um, definitely work on your feet. These guys, SK is going to come after you. They always do. We always have. Um, and uh, working off the bottom, if you have any time down there, Kyle's letting him up, so he's not going to be down there for too long. Mm -hmm. But He'll be coming back after him, so time to be aggressive, time to be good on our feet. Now, is there any one thing that South Kitsap Wrestling is known for? Are they, you know, like you talked about being good on your feet? Are they good on the mat? What, how, what would you describe South Kitsap? Definitely in, in uh, tournaments and whatnot, SK, uh, opponents of SK are always looking for guys from SK to stand up. When they're on the bottom position, like uh, Drew Lachlan was here just now, they're they're off their feet on the whistle automatically. It's, it's an explosion. Wow, well, like Kyle, Kyle made quick work with that. Pinned a guy in 19 seconds left in the first. Uh, we're off to a great start tonight. Two That's, pins. 12 to zip. Definitely. And uh, another treat now. Evan Winslow is going to come out and uh, probably do the same thing. Yeah, Evan's kind of a, an amazing kid. Not only is he a great wrestler, but he also plays on the soccer team kind of a multi-talented kid you know you kind of think of wrestlers as these uh you know kind of i don't know how to describe it they're more of a uh, off-season football type rather than soccer but yeah he he uh very quick on his feet also uh not just a, a muscle guy evan's probably one of the best technique ones on the team He's so good at just making moves look pretty and whatnot instead of going out and boxing a guy. Looks like Gig Harbor's getting stronger on their feet, tying up with Evan. He's trying to play the muscle game, but I don't think Evan's going to let him, dragging on that arm. Now, can you actually be too aggressive as a wrestler? Can you, you, know, can you overdo it or... Does it pay to be aggressive? Uh, you can be aggressive all you want, but when you start, maybe uh, there's been times when a wrestler can uh, 
push on the face to like block a view and whatnot. But when it comes to slap boxing, refs don't like that. Not at all. That's not wrestling. That's more of boxing. So they don't allow that. But definitely being aggressive, definitely being strong out there is the key. Evan scores his two as he takes his man out. Gig Harbor's going to take the bottom here. Gig Harbor's hoping to uh, either stand up out of that to get their escape or maybe get a reversal. It looks like somebody's bleeding. It looks like Evan's bleeding. So he's going to get some rest time, maybe a bit of coaching. Now that we have a moment, we would like to remind you parents that don't forget there's an upcoming three-day weekend in the South Kitsap School District. Students are off from the school from January 21st for Martin Luther King Day. Did I see somewhere that South Kitsap's going to be hosting an invitational wrestling meet? Actually, I do believe so. Next week on Saturday, the SK Invite, January 19th, they'll be at home. And uh, hosting a whole bunch of teams, maybe Pasco wrestlers from Eastern Washington too. Is that a pretty good, pretty big tournament? Pretty big, pretty huge. A lot of people come there wanting to knock off South, but they always do great and send people home disappointed. Now, when it talks about invite, yeah, obviously they only pick the best teams in the state. And you mentioned Pasco, that's over in the Eastern Washington, so the kids are traveling, huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Everybody comes to SK for this one. Sounds like fun. And that's an all-day tournament? All and day. How all do day. They, how do they set it up? I mean, with one mat, is there only one match going on at a time, or is there several going on? Or They take a few mats from uh, from downstairs. They have maybe four or five mats, and a few from the junior highs, I believe, and wrestle all day, and you never get bored. You can see great wrestling all day, especially so from SK. Two or three matches going on at the same time, never a dull moment, never definitely, stopping? Definitely, Lots of action, nonstop. Wow. Sounds like fun. So when was that? That's uh, Saturday the 19th. Yes, next Saturday. Great. Well, it looks like we're back ready to start. Uh, 108 in the first. Kyle's got a 2 to an, or Evan has a 2 to 1 lead. Looking for his takedown. He's going to get those arms out of the way and shoot, shoot a single, I guess. Gig Harbor working the front headlock. Definitely a muscle move, but doesn't look too effective on Evan. Yeah, just kind of powered right through there, reaching up there and trying to grab that leg. Taking it back to the center. Evan's going to be working for his takedown. There it is. Got the ankle. Working for a double. There's the lift. Perfect. Right into a half, and he's got... Big Carver's in trouble now. Evan scores his back points, the three near fall. What, what are back points? Back points are uh, near pins, you could say. When a wrestler is almost on his back, when he's on one shoulder, the ref will start counting off, and if you reach a certain amount of time, whether it be uh, three seconds or five seconds, you score near fall points. Evan takes three for almost having this guy for, it seems, five seconds. Now seven to two lead. You were saying earlier, what is SK famous for? You're going to see Evan explode right here, or either get his reversal. So obviously there's a little strategy here. Gig Harbor decided it's not just to let him up because they know that South's better at taking him down. Exactly. So he's going to try to just keep him on the mat, keep him on his belly. and Maybe work for the pin. He can try, but looks like Alex Chris from Gig Harbor has worked in his leg ride. Coming in with a cross face on Evan. Evan not letting him work, trying to get that leg out of there so he can... He can start the action. Chris moving to his back as Evan tries to get around to those hips for a reversal. Looks close, but he's got a tight leg ride on it on Winslow. Guy looks like flexibility would be another uh, 
definitely just a mess of body parts out there. You see wrestling, you see football players, they come out and just be brawny, but you see wrestling and it just looks like something's broken out there. Evan scores two for a reversal, taking re-control of the, the hips on Alex Chris out there. Working to the hips. Looks like Evan has uh, pretty much controlled this thing. 30 seconds left in the second period, and he's got a 9-3 lead. Definitely, definitely. Being aggressive out there, not letting Gig Harbor make, score a lot of points or make a lot of mistakes, but just wrestling smart and wrestling hard. You can see a post and drag here, something SK is also famous for, just getting his arm off the back and peeling that hand off Evan's leg so he can get around him. There it is, post and drag. Evan leads by eight points heading into the third round. SK is up 12 to zero. So now how do they determine who's down and who's up? How does that, how does that work? Does it trade every period or? All by the flip of a coin. When, uh, when the second round starts, they'll flip a coin and uh, the person will get their decision. And then in the third round, the other, other team takes their decision. So. So, so if I win the coin toss, then I get to choose if I'm up or down or if we're both up or how does that work? Um, you can either choose your, uh, your either both neutral position where both wrestlers are on the line or your up or down like before, where uh, Gig Harbor just chose down. Most of the time, a wrestler choose the bottom position so they can score points, easy escape points and whatnot. Doesn't look like it's gonna be happening for, for Gig Harbor. We have a blood call again for South Kitsap. Just in time for Gig Harbor too. So is that just incidental contact, a little no shot, or is yeah. something happening out there that we just can't see? Oh, definitely. It's always contact. You can see someone bleed like three seconds into a match just because they bonk heads or whatnot. But... So with this split time, it looked like Evan was in control, had the guy down. Um, what, how are they going to start it again? Do they start standing up? or They're going to have uh, the Gig Harbor guy come back on the bottom and uh, go off of the whistle. So... Evan's going to have to be ready for this guy to explode and pop out of there or either trying for the reversal with either a switch or a slap belly and whatnot. Tell you, this is just like going to school. I'm learning um, <laughs> something new every minute here. Definitely bringing it back now. Evan's taking control. So with a minute and 23 in the third, Evan's got an 11 to three lead. And just like you said, Evan's on top. Rides his ankle. Big Harbor tried to stand up, but not too well. And due to the rules, you can't stay on that leg forever. So that's why Evan switches. If you just ride around on the guy's ankle all day, it looks like you're pumping the water hose and whatnot, but Definitely working on top. He's got his leg right in there. Heading into the third round, you can expect Evan to just go crazy on this guy and score six points before time runs out. With an eight point lead, he'd score four points for the team due to a major decision, but he definitely wants those points. And I think the Gig Harbor guy can tell right now out there. So there's motivation not just to win, but there's actually motivation to pin someone. You actually score more points? Definitely. And if this keeps going this way for SK, Gig Harbor's going to be feeling that motivation to score some pin points for their team later on tonight. He's got him on his back. Oh, over the hips. Evan looks like he's in trouble. We have a reversal. Score now 13 to, f no. Scoring a reversal at the end, scores now 15 to five. Evan scores a major decision for the team. 
Puts them up 22. No. Up 16 to 0. So we move to the 171s. We have Dean Hoskins, Taylor Leonard. How's Dean doing this year? Well, you can expect six points out of him tonight. The pin with uh, Taylor Leonard from Gig Harbor wrestled last year at 145, so definitely been hitting the weight. So Dean's gonna have to out technique this guy, but he just had a, an amazing match against Central Kitsap last week and just made it look beautiful. You can see right now it's come down aggressive. So Ben, you had some familiarity with this young man that get wrestling from Gig Harbor? Actually, yes. Wrestled this guy last year from Gig Harbor. Lost by one point. One point. One oh, point. we don't like him. No, definitely not. And apparently Dean doesn't either. Coming out there, two to one now, getting his takedown, letting his man up. Again, working that smart technique rather than the uh, muscle up. Yeah, South seems like they're wrestling with a lot of confidence. You know, when you, you get the ability or you think you can take that guy down, you just let him up and play that game of trading two for one. Definitely. Like just now, Dean scores two points, sticking the four, score four to one. Working the uh, inside cradle right now. Oh, there it is. That looks painful. Definitely painful. Looks like we have blood time for Gig Harbor. Dean scoring three points for near fall. So now they have to start back down. Dean had him in a cradle on his back, ready to pin him, and now they have to start all over? They'll start in the down position, that's right. Oh, baby. Lucky Gig Harbor. Exactly. Get about ready to get pinned, I think I'd punch myself in the nose. <laughs> Definitely. Actually, in the cradle, it's it's really easy to kick yourself in the face when uh, when you're tied up like that. So, yeah. who knows? I didn't think the body was made to bend that way. And that's why you see more wrestlers at the masseuse than you would football players or anybody else. I'm sure you don't see a lot of swimmers who like uh, with bloody noses. So. Uh, no, not too often. No. Again, Dean comes out real aggressive. Not letting Leonard go for the one point. He's got got him up in the air with the single leg, which is something hard to do. But Dean takes him back down. He's riding him right now, being really aggressive out there, trying to break him off those posts. Which is something always the coach are yelling at. You tie up those arms and legs. That's what keep you. That would keep. That's what keeps your back off the mat. You know, just watching through here, it seems like the tendency is to try to attack one part of the body. Like, you know, you're grabbing with both of your hands onto one of their arms. Is that kind of the way definitely, it works? Definitely. When you're out there and you only you can only support yourself on your hands and knees, it's definitely hard when someone's wrapping them up. Something different here. Dean um, chooses to go down. Yeah, into the second round, Dean, instead of... Uh, Riding this guy, or maybe taking him down from the start. There he is. He explode off the whistle. He's up. You can see a post and drag as uh, Leonard hangs onto that hip. Doesn't want to let him go. Dean hasn't scored yet. Until now, two points for a reversal. So what? What is a reversal? When you've gone from facing the guy to behind him, or how do you? Uh, you know, how does that work? All of reversal is is basically is from when the opposing team has control and you come into control, just like that, scooting back onto the hips, scoring two points as Dean came from the down position. Cuts Leonard loose for one, scores nine to two. He's got a significant lead on him, but one of the funny things about wrestling is you can be up on someone seven, eight points, and they can score an instant five and then back in the game. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like he's going to let up at all. I mean, the, the motivation for all of those South Kitsap wrestlers seem to be pretty high tonight. Definitely not, especially with the band here and this being the last home match of the season. 
something that SK hasn't seen in a while at home meets the band. Yeah, a lot of a lot of emotions. You know, the senior parents being introduced, and a lot of these guys last wrestling for the last time in this gym. Definitely want to go out there and get a pin and on a high note. Or score two points for a reversal. Hoskins breaking Leonard down with the ankle pick. Tries to bow and arrow. Looks like he's going over. Leonard tries to sit out. Dean just sucks him back. Now, it doesn't look like the Git Carver um, wrestler is very active. Is there any rules about just kind of laying there and tucking up in a big ball? and Definitely. Stalling. You score lots of points if your other guy stalls. But uh, it may look that way, but some of the times it's just so tiring out there that uh, that's all you really want to do is take a nap out there. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the two periods, it looks like we got a pretty commanding lead, 11-3. to three. Yeah. Eight points ahead. If uh, Dean were to win right now, he would have a major decision and score four points for the team. I don't think he's going to let that happen heading into the third. He he can almost taste that pin coming. Yeah, it got kind of a tough break there. I mean, he had the guy on his back about ready to pin him, and all of a sudden the whistle blows, and let's wipe off some blood. Yeah. It's got to be disappointing, but... Dean's breaking him down right now with the ankle. Trying to control those hips, that's where the key to a wrestler's power comes from, right in the hips, not in the arms, like some people would think. He's got him on his back again, looks like he's Definitely. working for it. He's got that half Nelson right under his head and posting his arm out, so there it is, six points. As you can see, the wrestlers on the left there for SK, it only looks like maybe 10 or 12 guys, but if you can see out in the stands, there's the entire JV team. Gig Harbor's entire team is right on the other side of the stands, but SK has a huge program here. That's why they always put out such good wrestlers. Like Devin Spencer right here is going to come out and be aggressive. Yeah, you know, a good feeder program, a JV program, kids get some experience, you know, it, it, it makes your varsity team. Definitely. Put a lot of pressure on those varsity guys because someone's always clamoring after your spot. Okay, now I'm going to ask a question, and this is probably stupid, but why do wrestlers dye their hair orange? Well, Devin, actually I talked to him before the match, and it's, it's all for nicknames and for show and whatnot, but uh, he wanted me to call him the Blonde Bomber, so... The, the Blonde Bomber? The Blonde Bomber. But... He's gone by so many different things. Actually, I think Devin's the only one on the team who does that. But but he's definitely one of the more fun wrestlers to watch. He's maybe not the best, but everybody roots for Devin. Comes out there being aggressive. Moving for the single leg. And the fireman's carry. There it is. Scores his two takedown. Sure don't know what he did, but it was pretty quick. I mean, he went from being up facing the guy to behind him. Yeah. Crank it on that arm and executed a fireman's carry, just pulling him over his shoulder onto the mat. It's hard to stop with a big guy like Devin. Looks like we have a call here. And we have blood on Gig Harbor. Ooh, not good. You're going to have to stop the match for a second. Gig Carver will come back down with uh, Devin in control. So. so 52 seconds left in the first, and Devin's got a 2 to nothing lead. Definitely. Coming out and being aggressive. It's almost, almost certain that if whoever scores the first takedown it usually wins the match. And you, you can just tell who's going to be more aggressive and who's going to want to win more, which is really what it comes down to in these wrestling matches. Yeah, it doesn't seem like you're out there um, for very long, but I'm sure it's uh, 
very strenuous amount of time. The longest six minutes of your life. <laughs> really? A lot yeah. of conditioning going into wrestling? A lot of it. Um, wrestling starts in September, actually. You start running, start the conditioning then, and uh, work on your technique most of the season in shape. I'd say wrestlers, wrestling program is probably the most rigorous out of all of them at South, or at least the program that we go through. Looks like we're about ready to start again. Gig Harbor takes a down position. They're going to be looking for their one escape or maybe two points for a reversal, but I doubt Devin's going to let that happen. Gig Harbor runs it out of bounds, takes it back to the center. Devin stays strong and stays with him instead of letting him go. I guess we have blood again. We've seen more blood tonight than we do at a blood drive. Really? I think we have one of those coming up soon, too. Actually. Maybe the wrestling team can go out there and just break a few noses. And... I don't think it. that's exactly uh, that how it works. Right. <laughs> There's a needle involved in there somewhere. Yeah. Here we go. We're going to be ready. Right off the whistle. Devin doesn't let him up. Trying to break him down and work for that pinning combination. I wrestled with Devin in, back in junior high at Marcus. He had a move called the Devinator. It looks like he's doing it now, which is basically just a double wrist ride. Hold him down there and breaking him over their wrists and over their shoulders. But just tried it there and hopefully tries it again. Looking for the cradle. Big Harbor almost ready to stand up, but it's a little tough with uh, 189 pounds on top of you. At the end of the first period, it's two to nothing. Huh? Pretty competitive match here. Yeah, definitely Gig Harbor's heavyweights are getting close to them. They they get better and better. They have more returning wrestlers from that from those weights from 189 to 275 than last year. You can expect uh, John Potts, who's up next, to have a tough match. Probably the toughest you'll see tonight. That that's with the Corey Proctor, correct? Um, that's right. Yeah, Corey Proctor's a a, a a quality athlete. We faced him in the football program. Or a Casey Proctor. Is it? Yeah, Casey, 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 Casey Proctor. Casey. Corey is his brother. Yeah. You see, Devin tried for that fireman's carry, but Big Harbor scores their. Uh, their reversal points. But Devin's not going to let that happen. Yeah, things changed quickly. If Devin was down by a point, now all of a sudden he's back up by a point. Yeah, and the score can just rocket from there. You can go from two to one points all the way up to ten and whatnot in just a matter of seconds with people in a wrestling match. So a lot of action in just a short time, maybe in a football game or a basketball game, you have a fast break. You have fast breaks in wrestling, too. Gig Harmer almost in trouble. So what just happened there? Actually, the ref dinged Devin for an illegal move. You can't lock hands when you're in the controlling position on the bottom. Like, you'd say you'd seen a single leg before, and you can lock hands there. But when you're on the bottom, it's kind of, well, actually, it's incredibly hard for the wrestler to get away when they're locking hands around the waist. And it may just be touching fingers together, but so a lot of the refs ding you for that just so you don't do it again. So he's penalized a point, and tying it up four to four with 42 left in the second. Yep. And now that the score is even, Devin's not going to want this guy to stand up or try and get his escape point, so he's definitely going to be riding him hard coming after him. Right there with the ankle pick, looking for the, for the cradle and take him right over his lap.
trying to get those hips out. And there they are, back in the center. And it comes down to who wants to take down more. Tries to get that single, and there it is. Fireman's carry, two points for Devin Spencer. And with that move right before the end of the second, he takes a six to five lead. By far, this is the most competitive match we've had tonight. Two evenly matched wrestlers. Definitely. Devin's going to stay on the bottom here, hoping to score some points or at least just right out the last two minutes of the match. So a little strategy comes in, in into yeah. play right now, right? The, uh, the acting wrestling is what you call it, where he's trying to wrestle, but more just looking for the clock to run out. Not Devin. I guess he's going to go for his points. Just get to one escape as soon as uh, Gig Harbor breaks contact. Gig Harbor working the front headlock there. Going to try to either shuck Devin or, or go for his sock or whatnot. But, but Devin scores at one point. We'll take it back to the center. Gig Harbor can easily win this one if they just get their, uh, their takedown and score some points from there. But I doubt Devin's going to let that happen. Working the pummeling out there. Trying to get the better position. You can see that uh, before SK was getting a good position, but Casey Proctor's not going to let it happen. Drives in. Looking for the double leg. He's got his head down, so it's a little tough. Casey not going to let him in, so he's scoring more points than he can already give away. He's working, he's working. You're going to see the submarine. Devin's going to try and lift him right over his head or maybe take him to the side. And we're tied up with 36. Now it comes uh, gut check time. Who wants it more? Definitely. So is there overtime? If these two wrestlers are tied at seven at the end of regulation, do they, do they just call it a tie, or how does that work? Well, if Devin doesn't score any points right now, then uh, they're going to go into a sudden death takedown where both wrestlers are both wrestlers are neutral and they'll they'll go for excuse me the first points taken so and then they'll determine the match there and score three points for the team. So Devin's going to be looking to to get up out of this as soon as he comes back getting his coaching right now. Coach is probably telling him just just get out of there, be aggressive because that's really all it comes down to. You can see it on Devin's face right there. Now, do wrestlers just kind of hide, kind of hide a move or something special for situations just like this, where you need a quick point? You got 36 seconds. Uh, you know, is there, is there, or or is everybody knows what can be done? Everybody n normally knows, depending on the team and how long you practice, what can happen or what's going to be tried to happen. It just comes to drawing all those times you did it in practice and just actually executing when you need to. So. I don't quite understand what happened. Do we have an injury? Is that what we're Yeah, Gig Harbor, I guess, maybe had a sore arm or sore knee or something. But Yeah, I, I can understand sore arms, boy. <laughs> These guys get twisted around like you wouldn't believe. 36 seconds left. Looks like the referee is going to fix up some time issues, and then we're going to take it back. Devin's going to hopefully explode out of here for one point or maybe get his reversal points. Take the lead. It's tied 7-7, 36 seconds left. There it is. Working those hips out. Hopefully he can do it again. This time, stay towards the center of the mat so he can you get those points. And... Fighting those arms off. We spend a lot of time practicing that because that's what SK is known for. It's 
So no points were awarded, right? No he, points were awarded. He, he'd gone out of bounds before they had broken contact. But uh, you can see it soon. Try it one more time, huh? Definitely. And we're going to get a third time as a charm. And there it is. Devin takes his one point. 13 seconds left. Just got to wait it out. Put some pressure on Gig Harbor to get get working. And there it is. Uh, with the two point takedown right at the end, hikes the score up to seven or ten to seven, giving SK three points. The score now at twenty five to zero. We go into 215 pounds. John Potts, also a, a sophomore this year. Potts is a nice young man. I have him in my sophomore swing class. He does a nice job in there. Definitely the quietest guy on the team. Quietest guy on the team? Quietest guy on the team, but he's also one of the nicest, too. Well, he's not quiet when he's down at the pool. <laughs> Actually, Potts gets along well on the team. He actually missed a tournament, I think, a few weeks ago because he went shopping with his mom. So he has, he has his priorities straight. Made made those brownie points with mom, huh? Yeah, and with the team, doing doing a few extra push-ups just suited him well, I guess. Yeah. Now, you think if he had to do that over again, he'd go shot him with mom? Uh, probably not, because Pot's a good wrestler, and he was pretty mad that he missed a few matches. Always wanted to get time in and uh, more pins. And... Taking it back to the center. Pot's trying to work his takedown, but Gig Harbor's not going to let him in that easy. Now, how does the styles differ between the heavier guys and the light guys? Well, a lot of the uh, a lot of the heavier guys like the roll things. When you get their momentum going, it's hard to stop it. But uh, as opposed to just 103 pounds just rolling around out there, it's a little harder for them to roll. But uh, a lot more muscling, like you can see here. Guys working for the inside control, pummeling those arms in there, and. Uh, just basically the few same techniques, but a little more emphasis on the legs because they're uh, the only supports that the bigger guys have. So, Potts is looking for the open shot, just trying to get in there. Maybe kill the clock too, so he doesn't get so tired. Saving some energy for the, the end of the round when he might need it. Now, we've seen some pretty high scoring matches is that common or is this zero zero is this gonna be zero zero at the end of the first is that a happen very often i think it's just gig harbor no offense to them but um if you go to maybe a tournament matches and uh, you see the really good guys some matches are only one to zero and that's where one guy got an escape and nothing else happened for the entire match which is kind of boring but when you get that good it's you don't allow anybody to to do anything to you and they don't allow you to do anything to them too so so John chose to be on the down position right yeah John chooses down probably to get some points hoping he can stand up or maybe get his reversal instead of having to worry about uh, Gig Harbor getting those points trying to maintain a base down there on his hands and knees trying to get off of those steps up Working towards the edge. Here we go. Pot's almost scoring some points, but out of bounds beforehand. Yeah, he didn't score any points, but he sure scared a couple of cheerleaders over there. Definitely, definitely. It's got to be a very dangerous job for them when... Uh, 
John Potts comes flying through. Yeah, even the little guys, they sometimes get thrown around into a cheerleader's lap or two, so they have a tough job. Plus, they have, they have more cheers than I know wrestling moves, too, so <laughs> they spend a lot of time practicing those just as much as we do, so. And they have those cool pillows. Yeah. No pillows down the wrestling room. The gig harbor working the, the ankle ride to break Potts down, but Potts isn't going to let it happen. He keeps maintaining that base and popping those hips up so he can uh, look for those points. So both these guys are actually doing a pretty nice job right now, right? Potts is on the defense, and Definitely. Proctor is trying to take him down offensively. Both of them are working really hard out right there, probably. Uh, Potts trying to get up. You can see it right at the end there, trying to get those escape, and uh, Proctor trying to uh, break him down, look for the pinning combination. They switch places here going into the third round, third round, and uh, Potts is either going to have to hang on or... Or cut him loose and take him down. So we're tied at the end of two. And Green takes his injury time. Hopefully get some coaching. and. Uh, is it coaching that he wants or is it just some oxygen? It may be both, <laughs> actually. It doesn't hurt to uh, get both at the same time. Definitely when you come into a wrestling room and spend a few weeks in there, you find out what doesn't work in your body. Like if you have a trick knee or a sore neck or a bad back, you, you find out because everybody has one. Potts looks a little eager for his match out there. I'll score some points. Yeah, it's shown quite a bit of maturity for a sophomore. I mean, he's battling well. Definitely. And I do believe that this is only... Potts is uh, third year of wrestling, and he's definitely shown a lot of improvement from uh, last year, also of varsity as a freshman, which is something to behold on varsity, too. Looks like we're going to get started again. And Gig Harbor takes a down position. Potts is ready to wrestle. So what's the strategy here? Just... Uh... Try to get him on his back, or how is he going to do this? Definitely um, getting those hips down. Um, Potts gets called for a illegal starting position. Just got to adjust those knees. and uh, He's going to want to break those hips down and uh, not let Gig Harbor up at all. And uh, work for those pinning combinations. Like right here, he has the cradle. Potts is known for the cradle. And uh, Gig Harbor is going to want to be pushing him out of bounds, getting those points from uh, escaping, or if he's lucky, get his uh, reversal and maybe put Potts on his back. But hope that won't happen. I want to remind you that South Kitsap School Board meetings are held on the first and third Mondays of the month at the District Administrative Office. Community members are always welcome to attend. They start at 7 p.m. And I think they talk about wrestling there, too. I'm sure that's high on the agenda. Hey, definitely. We're still tied with a minute and seven left in the third. Both kids working real hard. Potts working that ankle, trying to not let a... Actually, Casey Proctor up. I guess Kyle Euchre wrestled at 189. Did a fine job against Devin Spencer, but not wanting to let Proctor up here. Potts has got a minute and five left. The score is still 0-0, so it may just come down to sudden death. You may get to see who wants their uh, her takedown more. Potts get caution for starting position. I'm 
the refs are always looking for who's too tight and who's too loose and, and whatnot. Looks like looks like Ig Harbor scores a point for locking hands. Potts locked his hands as he came up and uh, tried to take Proctor back down. He's gonna cut him loose and try and go for that takedown with 40 seconds left. He's got to tie the score at two. Crowd starts to get in it with 20 seconds left. Definitely. By far the loudest they've been tonight. Rooting for Potts, hoping he gets that takedown, just being aggressive. Comes down to the last six seconds. Here it comes. Not a high scoring match, but evenly contested with John losing by two. Definitely. Both wrestlers going out and showing a good effort. So Geek Harbor scores their first points of the night. They come back uh, with three points for a major uh, for a major decision. So 25 to three. Looks like we got the big boys out there now. Definitely. Josh Smith is our first year wrestler, but he's learning a lot of stuff and he's coming out and he's better and better every match. You know, that takes a lot of guts to come out as a senior, first year, get out here and compete at this level. Actually, I think Josh helped out with basketball last year. So he spent a lot of time in the wrestling room uh, with basketball and seeing the wrestlers. This year, with the absence of Buddy Anderson, Buddy Anderson was a state placer, I think, in his sophomore year. With him gone, they needed a needed a spot to be filled and Josh is the man to do it. Trying to avoid that takedown. Trying to break over uh, Matt Alfred over his hip on that side. Trying to use that weight against him. I don't think Gig Harbor's Matt Alfred's going to let it go. like Alfred's working the pinning position but they're out of bounds so Josh is in luck and again the cheerleaders go jumping out of the way definitely I guess those are the best seats in the house when they're in the middle of the match huh? or in the middle uh -huh. of the ring definitely so all that work and the young man from Geek Carver scores two points um, two points for his takedown but uh if Josh had been closer to the center of the mat, he would have gotten some near fall points, maybe even a pin. And Josh is working to, to get up out of that position right there. So what's going on right now? These two guys just working for position, trying to fill each other out. Or? Definitely. Um, Gig Harbor is going to be working those uh, those pinning combinations. Like right there, you see the power half trying to break Josh over on one side to get him on the shoulders. But uh, Josh is definitely going to be hand fighting down there so they can't work anything and try and get those escape points. Okay, explain this to me one more time. I just saw the young man from Gig Harbor lock his hands. But he was on top, so that's legal. Well, if you lock hands around the waist, that's when you get in trouble. But if you lock your hands like you just saw in the power half, then not so bad. 
a lot of people get slammed by being picked up and, and whatnot by locking hands when they're around the waist. So refs just decided to outlaw that. Smith being aggressive, not wanting to let uh, Matt Alford go. Work in the cradle. But uh, Alfred has a lifeline on Josh's leg right there, as you can tell. Looking for a better position, maybe the takedown, the reversal points. So right now we're just in a strength game, right? Both testing out who's got the most upper body strength? Pretty or? much. Um, Matt's going to be working for that leg, trying to suck that up as best he can and maybe break him over a hip. While uh, Josh is going to be trying to maybe pull him over, or break him over a hip, and use that cross face that you showed earlier right there. But you can see it on his face, just moving him hard. I don't know how it goes in football, but the saying goes, wherever the head goes, the rest of the body is. So definitely Josh is going to be trying to move that head. You can see how tired Smith is out there. So what just happened? Why did they stop it there? Was just um, it seems that uh, well, really, I couldn't tell you. I think that uh, Josh may have been injured there or just needed a breath real quick, but. We're back to wrestling. Josh is breaking them down, looking for those spinning combinations. Trying something basic like the half Nelson. So at the end of two periods, we Geek Harbor takes a slight lead, two to nothing. Both those big fellas working pretty hard out there. Definitely. Sucking a little gas right now. You can definitely tell who works the hardest in practice because uh, you can see the bigger guys like Devin Spencer, John Potts. They're always the first ones to get sweaty. So definitely sucking some gas, but trying to stay strong going to the third round. Only two minutes left. Or Josh to score some points here. Quick move by Gabe Carver puts him on his back. The reversal, the pin, just like that. Nine seconds into the first round, he turned around to take the score up to 25 to nine. We come into the lightweights now. Corey Westland, the sophomore this year, first year for. Uh, South Kitsap, especially varsity, that's got to be quite a jump from JV wrestling at a junior high. Now I'm looking at the program and he's wrestling this Sam Easton, but right next to it it says Expedition. Exposition. What does that mean? Um, looks like Sam might not have made weight, actually, if it's an exhibition. Then uh, if it's an exhibition, the points that either wrestler scores aren't going to count towards the team score for the night so who wins the match tonight but uh they'll still wrestle it off so both wrestlers can get some time in or so that's a fancy word for practice yeah pretty much practice with the crowd these good little guys move a little quicker than the big guys huh definitely faster and uh they get worn, worn out too just as quick Easton scores a quick two right off the bat. Corey's going to have to work back. Definitely both wrestlers being aggressive. Trying to work off those knees to the toes and hop out of there. 
You can see Westland trying to drive him over that leg so he can score his reversal points. Pretty soon to try and pop that head right up by his hips and score some points. At the beginning of the season, uh, the team didn't have a 103 pounder or a 275 until Wesson came along and Josh Smith also. So they filled the big spots all, instead of giving a, an opposing team a 12 point lead right off the bat. So so if you don't have a wrestler at that weight, you immediately call it a pin? And uh, you may... A forfeit, basically a pin. They'll give you your team six points. And it looks like later on at uh, 135 and 140, Gig Harbor is going to be giving up six points for for forfeits. So six points for both of those weight categories. Right. Westland trying to work a double leg in there, but not getting very far with the Easton pushing on his head. We finish up the first round. It looks like it will be... Actually, it looks like we have a green decision. So Gig Harbor is going to defer their choice, and uh, Westland's going to take down. Try that standoff or maybe the reversal. So one to two lead for Gig Harbor. And after Westland tonight, we have uh, Kyle Timbers, who's going to wrestle 112 pounds. He's a senior tonight. Also varsity last year at the 103 spot. Such a little guy, he gained some weight over the summer. He's going to come out and be pretty miraculous tonight. Definitely score six points, along with Micah Kipperberg, who's going to wrestle 119 tonight for his older brother, Derek. Westland scores his two reversal points, takes a lead by one. Looking across over at Coach Hudeberg, he looks pretty relaxed tonight. Definitely pleased. Definitely. A few days ago over at uh, Central Kitsap, or when Olympic was here in our gym a few days ago, uh, he wasn't so calm hopping out of his chair and screaming. It's pretty scary when they're uh, they're trying to tell you what to do. They're just waving their arms like, do this, do this. Well, what's that? I can't see it. But definitely relaxed, definitely calm. Well, what's the idea with dimming all the lights? Is that so the, the light doesn't bounce off um, Coach Olson's forehead? <laughs> Actually, I think it's for more of effect, but I might ask him that. I'm sure the camera guys appreciate that, right? Yeah. 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 Not so much glare. Actually, I guess it's supposed to, uh, it adds definitely more effect. It's definitely more dramatic when you go out there, more like a boxing ring. <laughs> Westland has the lead three to two into the, into the third round. Big Harbor's gonna choose down, try those escape points. You know, I started out with those 20 to 2 and 20 to 5 and all that kind of scores. Now we're into these close matches, these 3 to 2s and two to, 2 to nothings. Looks like Gig Harbor has a solid heavyweight section of the team, and apparently their little guys aren't all that bad either. We have Easton scoring a reversal points. Westland's down by one now. You can see him there grabbing that Gig Herber leg and he's gonna wanna crank on that as hard as he can so he can pop his head out and you know, try something. And there it is. Easton lets him go, hoping he can take him down on his feet. 
So now it just comes down to who wants it more. Looks like Westland. Coming real tight on those legs. He's going to want to move to the hips so he can get his two points. So right now this is not considered to be in control. He's not in control quite yet because he hasn't gotten the hips. And uh, Easton still has a chance to heist out, but not anymore. So with 40 seconds left, he takes a two-point lead. Yeah, 6-4. to four. And uh, all Westland has to do now is just make sure that Easton doesn't get up and possibly go for the pin. There it is with the half Nelson. Nice job by the young man. Six points for South Kitsap. Westland waiting for the end. Use all that extra energy and just be aggressive. Now, is there some strategy? Do you come out real strong or do you kind of just pace your way through the whole six minutes? Um, definitely good to get a good lead, but uh, you want to do save your energy or else you can be completely exhausted by the end and just end up on your back and not know it and really not care because you're that tired. We're going to see Kyle Timbers come out aggressive. He always does. Probably get that first takedown. It looks like Justin Kreider is also going to be aggressive too, not going to let Kyle get in there. Working for the double leg. Kyle Timbers was academic all-state wrestler last year. One of the smartest wrestlers in the 112 or 103 weight class, so definitely a recognition. Also one of the best wrestlers on the team. So he's getting it done in the classroom, not only in the mat, huh? Yeah. Putting an end to that uh, wrestler stereotype, I guess. Working behind. There's the takedown. Kyle Timbers, two points up. And uh, Kreider trying to work Timbers onto his back in the, in the sit out. Took it out of bounds. He's going to have to come back to the center and hop out of there. So with 30 seconds left, he's hanging on to a slight lead of 2 to nothing. Working in the arm bar as uh, Kreider sat out. Gave him an opportunity to work one of the, one of the more painful pinning combinations. And there it is. Rolls him over on his back. Hoping for the first round pin. There it is. Impressive. That's one of the great things about wrestling, or at least I think that uh, when you go out there, you're wrestling only one other guy. And it's probably the most gratifying sport. Maybe, I think golf has the same type of feeling. But... Uh, yeah, they call it a team sport, but when you're out there by yourself, yeah. it, it's individual. And you can lose your match, and your team can still win, but definitely it's it's two guys out there giving 110%, and it's just who wants it more. So unlike a lot of sports where it's all team effort. You see Micah Kipperberg here. He's going to definitely want it more. Now, is, is Micah wrestling up? Didn't I see him last week at like 112? Actually, he is tonight. He he and Kyle battle it out almost weekly for the 112 spot. But uh, you're not going to get to see Derek Kipperberg tonight, who is the uh, fourth in state for SK. Uh, definitely a treat because that would be probably the fastest pin of the night. Micah working quick may, may just take his brother's spot. And... Uh, 
No takedown points, but I don't think that's Don and Micah a bit. You know, I think if I had my choice, I'd rather wrestle up. Then I wouldn't have to worry about weight and get eat an extra cheeseburger every once in a Definitely. while. Definitely. Supersize those fries or something. Micah, one of the skinny guys on the team, he has to, uh, he's got to watch his weight. But when he comes into the wrestling room afterwards making weight, it's pretty much Thanksgiving for him <laughs> in, inside of his locker. He's got a Subway and McDonald's and whatnot. And so you get a little time after you weigh in to recoup some of that energy and put some... Exactly. Put some food in you. Weigh in at 119 and actually wrestle at 135 or something, huh? Yeah. Well, it looks like uh, Jeremy Jackson for Gig Harbor is actually working now. Getting the takedown on Micah. Micah's looking for a switch there to sit out. Hoping to reverse him. Now this is different. Usually they're head to head. Now we're head to foot there. Definitely. I th do believe that Micah's first year as a wrestler was uh, freestyle wrestling instead of uh, Greco-Roman. So he knows a lot of different moves that some of us have never seen before. Like there, just there. Getting a reversal like... Well, maybe not. But definitely one of the technique wrestlers we talked about earlier instead of a muscle guy. So at the end of one, we got a two-to-two -two tie. Pretty competitive. Mm -hmm. Starting the second round. Hope to see explosion out of Micah. Gig Harbor stays tough. There we go. I don't know if you at home can hear this, but we can hear uh, Coach Huterberg yelling all the way down from the floor. Definitely telling Micah to get up out of there, score some points. Stand up, stand up. That's what counts. we got a youngster off here to the side that wants to join the action. Yeah. Almost as big as Micah. But, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. Working the, uh, the Peterson lock on... Uh, on to Kreider, Micah's getting his back points right now. Those near fall we talked about earlier. Looking for the pin, he's probably gonna switch him right now. Bringing it up seven to two, Micah's up by five. And uh, presuming that uh, Gig Harper is gonna take down with only 54 seconds left. That's enough time for him to get out of there and score some points, but uh, Micah's definitely going to have to keep on his toes now. And there's the pinning combination, it looks like. Scoring his back points. That amazes me, the flexibility of that young man. My arm would have just fallen off. Definitely. One of the more painful and uh, humiliating types of pins there. I think, I don't even know if there's a way out of that, actually. Micah just catching a breather while having the other guy work. Micah scoring more back points, putting the score up 10-2, to two, up by 8. They have a caution for a, a dangerous hold. I don't think I've seen a hold that's not been dangerous. <laughs> Crowder gets out right at the buzzer. Making the score 10 to 3. He's down by 7, so he's going to have to. Yeah, that was a productive round for Micah. Oh, yes. 
He's going to have to do some work now. But after uh, after the gravy roll, it looks like Micah's not going to let him. He wants those six points. That's a cradle, right? That would be the cradle. One of the also painful because the key to the cradle is sticking a a knee right in the short rib, so uh, you hold still. Also, you can kick yourself in the nose like we saw earlier. So. It looks like we, uh, we're we going to have Coach talk to the ref for a little second. Thinking he's asking him out for dinner afterwards? Um, More like if we can just stop now and call it a win. Or maybe just a debate on, a, on some of the rules. Some of these talks can get pretty pretty loud, but not with Coach Uterberg. There's a lot, of, a lot of respect there that comes out of him and a lot of respect for him in the wrestling room, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems like he's an under-control guy. You know, not a lot of yelling and screaming. Definitely. Probably gets it all done and out of the out of the system in the wrestling room, huh? Yeah. Well, not even that. It's just more of an intimidation. Like, you can see it in Coach Dias, too, who's also the assistant coach. That uh, Not a lot of messing around down there. Just you have fun, but you also you're learning to wrestle. <laughs> I think you. I think you should just ask him out for the dinner. You know. Yeah. Hey, you want to go get a burger after this whole thing's <laughs> over with? And Definitely. So Micah chose to let him up, right? Micah's gonna let him go and try and get him on his feet, giving him one for two, hopefully. So now to get him a major decision, he has to win by how many? By a major decision, he has to win by eight. And uh, scores now is ten to five after that stand up by by Kreider. Micah's not going to let that happen. He's got the single leg, taking him down. Trying to work the arm bar. You got to give it to the little guy from Gig Carver. He's battling. I mean, he's Definitely. been close to being pinned a couple times, and he's battled his way out of it. Definitely. There was a match last week against CK. His older brother, Derek, got a forfeit for a... Uh, I guess the kid just got scared of him and ran away, but <laughs> when people hear Kipperberg, it's like almost like tidal wave, so let's run away. You can see six points for Michael Kipperberg. So all that hard work pays off late in the third. Definitely. So South has a pretty commanding lead, 43-9. to nine. Definitely. And even if... Uh, it's in the bag now for South. If uh, Dustin Johnson and James Thompson are going to wrestle next, if both of them even get pit, SK still got it in the bag. I think there's too much pride there in those young men to allow that to happen. True. They want their pin just as badly as the guys before them. So Dustin coming out strong. Also, he's a junior this year and uh, went to regionals last year as a sophomore. You know, before the match, I was walking around and I saw some of these uh, Letterman's jackets. They got these little baby pin things on there. What does that stand for? Actually, those are a gift from the cheerleaders. If you get a pin in a match, then they'll they'll give you your pin, and uh, they make a nice decoration. They scare they scare people when you go places. That guy's got clothespins on him. He's good. So like a, a, a hash mark in football, put a little white mark on your helmet. Pretty much, yeah. Same kind of idea. Yeah. It looks like Dustin's going to get his tonight. Only less than a minute in the round and getting near fall points. Dustin last year was the, what we call the king of the stack, which is a pretty hard combo to put someone into pinning him. He had 14 last year. 14 stacks. Try to just there, working for the half Nelson right now. Working the screwdriver now. Rolling over uh, Coleman Piper onto his back. Almost have him. Letting him up, trying to wrestle him on his feet. (laughs) 
Piper working off the bottom and in coming into the second round. Dustin's going to take the bottom position. Hopefully score some points there. He's got a 7-1 lead right now. Scores an easy two for reversal, letting him up. Looks like Dustin's going to be working for the uh, technical fall. Or maybe the, uh, maybe the pin if he can find it. And Gig Harbors, Colin, uh, Colin Piper is going to have to step it up a bit after especially damaging first round. With those many points behind, he's got to kick it up. Puts him in the cradle. Scoring his near fall points. There it is with the knee in the side. Dustin's got plenty of time on the clock. You can tell right now he's catching a breather. You've got him in the middle of the mat like Life is looking pretty good right now. For Dustin, at least. Exactly. Maybe not for Gig Harbor. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a very sad, very silent bus ride home for them. <laughs> at least it's not too far to go. Yeah. Piper trying to come in with the shot. Dustin not letting him, taking him himself. The beautiful double leg takes him down, two points. You can put that in a how-to video, how to wrestle. You can see Dustin Johnson, there it is. Commanding lead, 16 to three at the end of two. Now Dustin only needs another two points and he'll technically Technical pin this guy, which is a 15-point lead, and he'll get five points instead of six for a pin. So do, do they stop the match at that they'll point? They'll stop the match then. I, the coaches tell you about back in their day when they had, they didn't have those, so scores would get up to like 50 to two and whatnot. I guess people just got pretty embarrassed after that point, so they they put a limit on how bad you can beat someone. Dustin putting, putting him on his back. And there it is, six points. And that lead for South Kitsap just keeps increasing. Just getting bigger. Now we have the last match of the night. James Thompson's going to come out here. James also, James is a 125 wrestler who stepped up from the JVs to wrestle varsity tonight. Looking for a pin. So the young man's getting a chance at the big boy show, huh? Definitely. Think his uh, heart's a pounding right now? Probably. He's got to be pretty nervous, especially with the last match. And uh, he's going to come out and wrestle hard like he always does. I'm sure the competition down in the mat room is uh, just about as much as it is out here, though, right? Definitely, definitely. So they, The JV tournament, some of the varsity teams from other schools send their guys there and still lose the JV guys from South Kitsap. And A quality program. Pretty damaging to the, to the other team's egos. Oh, I bet. Dustin already getting his two takedown. Being aggressive, coming out there trying to break down those posts for uh, Gig Harbor has. Now, who normally wrestles at this weight? Um, Is that Brandon Little? At 130, normally Brandon Little, yeah.
which is a shame that Brandon's not wrestling tonight because he's also a senior. And it's a uh, last home match, but he'll probably get a shot at Peninsula, which is also one of the better teams next week. That was kind of unique. Uh, the guy from Gig Harbor, he's on his back fighting for his life and reaches down and pulls down his shorts a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Getting a little wedgie action going on. Definitely. Not the greatest uniforms in the world to, <laughs> to go out there and wrestle with. Well, it could be worse. It could be a Speedo like they have in swimming. Definitely. Gig Harbor on his back. James just... Taking it easy, scoring some flat points. Making the score eight to zero. Young man is doing well, stepping up and from JV to varsity. Definitely. Putting him in the lion tamer now. Now who comes up with Almost. these names? The lion I have tamer no clue. And all They've that been kind around since the beginning of time, I guess. Are you sure you're not just making up things? No, I swear. I swear to you. You've been watching a little WWF or something <laughs> late at night, and uh, you know I can I can understand some of this of cradle. I figure that one out, and right. cross face and all that. How in the heck did you come out with a lion Actually, tamer? Actually, there's a move that Capital used to do last year called the the Ghetto Blaster that has nothing to do with either or. <laughs> it's all just wrestling jargon. And besides, it sounds so much cooler than he picked up his leg. So, <laughs> so tomorrow at school, these guys are going to be teasing me about, you know, how stupid are you, Mr. Dame? Uh, you you then had you going all night long. Uh huh. <laughs> and it's done. I only have one name for that. Ten, six points for Dustin J or for James Thompson. <laughs> Well, just like you predicted, it's pretty dominating by South tonight. Definitely. 40-point lead over Gig Harbor. we got a couple of announcements or anything we're going to get done tonight before we leave? Actually, we wanted to make sure that you watch Wolf Tracks every Thursday evening at 7.30 right here on BKAT. Wolf Tracks is a national award-winning program produced by South and Vance Video Production Studios. Some of this month's stories include uh, Matterville Feast, uh, Born Exchange Expose, and much, much more. That's Wolf Tracks, Thursday evenings at 7.30. Well, anything surprise you tonight? Actually, some of the heavyweights uh, wanted to see John Potts win, but uh, not so. And, uh, actually, it looks like we're going to have a, a JV match now. Tom Eisler. Tom Heisler's a sophomore who just moved here from Guam, so it should be pretty interesting to watch him wrestle. He's only been on the practice room for maybe a week or two. Comes out strong. Well, he's got it figured out, huh? It's SK Wrestling. Be aggressive right off the bat. Either that or I think it's a light. They must have something to do with the light out there the boxing ring. Scrambling out there. There's no, definitely no messing around with this young man, huh? He's definitely. going right for the throat. He wants his pain. I guess he wants to go home. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe eat something, too. <laughs> exactly. Definitely. I think that's why wrestlers are so mean. Yeah. Uh, they're <laughs> starving <laughs> to death. <laughs> well, it's definitely not starving to death. It's just more of a prolonging it. If someone doesn't get two meals a day, then you can get cranky. Tom. The pin. That was quick work. And tonight, the Wolves win 67 to 9. Looks like we got one more. We got one more guy coming out? Uh, we have John Sisney, a 140 weight, who's going to be uh, taking a forfeit. I guess Gig Harbor doesn't have a man for him to wrestle. And I do believe that's it. Well, you called it, Ben. You, t you talked about South being a dominant team, and they surely took control tonight. Definitely. I want to thank you for joining us at South Kitsap High School for the wrestling match. 
We'd also like to thank the students of the video program here at South who made the television program possible. The final score again is 67 to 9. It was fun working with you, Mr. Dave. Yeah, a great time. I learned a lot. You're a good teacher. Definitely. Those those names, they really are there. Can come down and check it out sometime. I'm sure they are. And you know I've written them all down. I'm going to ask Coach Hudeberg tomorrow morning. Will do. We're going to take it down to the floor, and that's it for tonight's broadcast. Thanks again.